So when we disperse one liquid into another liquid, um, we don't always get a uniform homogeneous distribution, right? That, that is why we have a system of an emulsion with a mono dispersed system means that we are able to disperse the droplets having more or less you know, uniform size. If we measure the diameter and we calculate the range, the range will be very narrow because the droplets have more or less the same diameter. So we have a mono dispersed system which usually is quite stable. The emulsion is quite stable. On the other hand, we can have a poly, <coughs> what, poly dispersed systems. We have a wider droplet size distribution. So that's quite simple. Then um, towards the end of the last lecture, we went through uh, some of the terms or terminologies. Yeah? So I hope uh, when you, you have made some uh, revision, the meaning of these uh, terms, because when I use these terms in the lecture, you should be able to understand and uh, uh, relate with uh, whatever that we cover in lecture. Okay? For example, one of the important terms that we have to understand is, a, is a, the dispersed system. So food is a complex dispersed system. So we actually stop at this on this slide last week. So let's say uh, uh, Chu Yu. I, I have problem to pronounce it. Chu 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 Yu. Okay, Chu Yu. Uh, let's say ice cream. Okay, the McDonald's ice cream. Okay. So the ice cream is uh, described as an emulsion, a complex dispersed system. It is an emulsion as well as a foam. So if we use this picture to illustrate ice cream, the, the, you know, we take one unit volume of ice cream and we put it under microscope. So how, how would you describe ice cream as a complex dispersed system? How would you describe this system which can represent ice cream as a complex dispersed system. What do we have here? Mariam, you'd like to try? Andrew? This is a dispersed system. What do we have there? Africa, North Africa, where is North Africa? Yeah. You like to try to describe what is meant by a complex dispersed system. Food as a complex dispersed system. We can use ice cream as an example here. What do we have in the ice cream? Hmm? What are the ingredients in ice cream? We have milk fat, right? What else? Of course, we must always have water. What else? Sugar? Hmm? Sorry? Oil, well, the fat cell. Flavor? Color? So now, foam, yes, we have air bubbles, right, trapped like this in the system. <laughs> we have maybe hydrocolloids as a stabilizer. Locust wind gum, carrageenan. So with this, all these ingredients will be mixed in the ice cream machine. There will be an agitation, a mixing. So during this agitation, ice cream will be uh, ice cream. 
air will be drawn in and incorporated into the system. The air will be dispersed in the liquid phase of the ice cream. So we get a foam. Then what happens to the fat? The fat will be dispersed as the fat droplet in the continuous phase, which is water in this case. The hydrocolloids can be gelatin, can be a mixture of locust bean gum and you know carrageenan and other gums. They will provide, they will increase the viscosity of the continuous phase. At the same time, they will also be adsorbed on the droplet surface and provide the protection or the, 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 the steric kind of steric hindrance that would prevent the or would would prevent the, the drop the oil droplets to come close and you know uh, form a flock and maybe merge. If you want to have a good stable emulsion of foam, we do not want the dispersed phase, the droplets, to come close together. We don't want them to touch each other, to stick to each other and finally merge. Because when that happens then the, the emulsion would be destabilized. The foam would be destabilized. The foam would collapse. So you will not get a good ice cream if you don't get a good stable foam in the system. Also, we have sugar crystal. Uh, we have sugar. The sugar is uh, basically in the, in the aqueous phase. Whatever that is dissolved, that is soluble in the water phase, would be available in the aqueous. We have some flavors. We have water-soluble nutrients. We have salts. We have stabilizers. So these all solubilize in the aqueous phase. Then we have also, we can also add emulsifier. The emulsifier would form layer and absorb layer around each droplet. And this would provide a so-called steric hindrance. Also, this, is, this will prevent the two droplets to join, to come close to each other, and therefore it will stabilize the emulsion. In the oil phase, we have whatever that is solubilized in oil phase would be available in the oil phase. Yeah? Flavor, some, flavor, some flavors are soluble in fat or in oil, and any fat-soluble nutrients. And during the ice cream, making of the process of making ice cream, we reduce the temperature we, you know, to a freezing temperature. Then during the freezing process, water will start to form crystal, ice crystal. Whereas the, the fat would also form crystal, the fat crystal. So we have also now a solid crystal form. Yeah? in the oil phase. So this is basically uh, you know, a complex dispersed system. The good example here that uh, we can use to represent emulsion and foam and dispersion of other soluble component is, is an ice cream. Any question here? Anyway, let me now uh, introduce uh, a few more terms uh, if, you want to under if you want to understand more about emulsion. Um, two terms here, very important. One is called, one is surface tension and the other one is interfacial tension. So what is the meaning of this? So this is the definition. And let's read this definition very carefully and pick a few keywords here. Surface tension is the property of a liquid in contact with air. Liquid and air. Yeah? Liquid is one phase, another phase is air. That makes it behave as if it was covered with a thin membrane 
under tension. So maybe we have heard this, uh, the word or the term surface tension. Yeah? So remember, when we, when we use this term surface tension, it refers to the interface between liquid and air. When we have a liquid and liquid, that we cannot use the term surface tension. It's not accurate. It's not accurate to use this, the term surface tension when we have the interface between liquid and liquid. But when we have an interface between liquid and air, then we can use the term, use, we use the term surface tension. We can see the, the phenomenon of surface tension is manifested uh, in the physical form. For example, we can see here, I think from, uh, we have observed this uh, phenomenon, the, what is this, the dew, a bone in the morning. They always form like a drop, you know, uh, a spherical or at least semi-spherical shape. Yeah, very nice. Uh, and you, you look at the drop, the water form, a nice spherical droplets. And we can also see this phenomenon. Uh, I remember when I was in my childhood, when I was a small boy, there is no pipe water at that time. So we have to, uh, everything water come from the talaga, the prigi, the well. So you can see this uh, every day actually. The small insect can uh, move on the surface freely without drowning. <laughs> So in this case, the, the water form like, you know, you can imagine like there's a skin on the surface of the water. This is also a phenomenon of surface tension. Okay. If we put a drop of oil in the water, um, you can find the video in YouTube actually, you know, if you put a drop of oil, suddenly this, uh, this insect actually will drown into the water because uh, something happened there actually when we add the oil. So that's the phenomenon of surface tension when, uh, which we can observe in, in this form. Now, let's say we have a liquid here in a container and Above the liquid is air. Okay. So now imagine now, imagine that we can see the molecules. We can see the molecules in the water. So the molecules inside, let's say we pick this one, would be attracted with to other molecules around it. So we, this molecule, we have the molecule here, the molecule here, the molecule here. So they'll be attracted to each other, each one of these. Okay? So you can imagine there is a cohesive force. There is a cohesive force that holding them together. They are attracted or pulled to each other. Imagine, imagine now in this class, you are sitting there and you are like holding your hand together. So there is a cohesive fo force that um, kind of binding the molecules cohesively. They are pulling you know, uh, to each other. But imagine now the molecules on the surface here, between the interface, between the liquid here and the air. So now you can imagine the mo each molecules on the surface here are now being pulled down by other molecules down here. But there is no equal force that are pulling them from the top because the, the top here is the air. So now there is unequal, unequal attractive force from below and from 
uh, from the top. So can you now imagine that the molecules inside here are pulling the molecules at the interface of air and water. So they are pulling it such that it will form like that, a droplet, a spherical shape. Because the molecules now are pulling down the molecules on the surface because there is no equal attraction from the top, from the air. So that's how you get the spherical shape of a drop of water on the surface. And this is what we can measure as an air-liquid interface which, also, which is also known as a surface tension. Okay. So now we can, uh, we can describe the situation which I have just described just now. The molecule inside the liquid interact equally with other molecules from all sides. From all sides. But whereas the molecule at the surface is affected only by the molecule below it. The molecules below it pulling the molecules on the surface down. Okay? The molecules exposed to air behave differently and try to contract to the smallest possible area. Hence, the spherical shape that we observe. Can you imagine? I think it's, uh, it's quite, uh, it's quite, um, it's quite easy, I think, to, to visualize that, right? So now we define surface tension as Newton per meter. Not Newton per meter square. Yeah? If, it, if you define, if you have the unit Newton per meter square, that will become what? Huh? In rheology? <laughs> Stress, which is the pressure, right? The, in, the intensity of the force acting on a square of, uh, on a meter square or inch square or whatever, per unit of area. But this one is Newton per meter, so be careful with the unit. So surface tension is defined as a force acting over the surface of the liquid per unit length of the surface perpendicular to the force. That's how we define surface tension. Okay? Force acting over the surface of the liquid per unit length of the surface perpendicular to the force. So when we measure surface tension, how do we measure the surface tension? So, um, I, I will show the video uh, shortly. Usually, we put uh, a wire inside here. Then, we pull it up. So, when we pull the, the wire up to the surface, it will sort of break the air-liquid interface, which is a kind of like, a, we can imagine like a membrane or a skin here. So, the energy required to expand that, yeah? to expand the surface area, because this area between air and liquid is actually contracting to form the spherical shape. So now, if you want to measure the surface tension, you have to kind of expand the surface and break it up. So you need energy for that. So that's why it is measured as a form of force acting over the surface of the liquid per unit length of the surface perpendicular to the force. Um, I'll show the, the video shortly how to measure the surface tension. But let's um, uh, give a, a proper definition for surface tension. So there's a symbol to denote uh, surface tension. Can also be defined as the amount of energy required to increase the surface area between a liquid and a gas. 
by an amount of delta A. Okay, so that is the amount of energy required to expand or to increase the surface area between a liquid gas interface by this amount of uh, area. Okay. Whereas interfacial tension is defined as amount of energy required to increase the interfacial area between two immiscible liquids, for example, oil and water. So when we have liquid in air, we use the term surface tension. When we have a mixture, say, oil and water, so oil and water will have its own surface tension. When they are mixed together, they will form an interfacial tension. Okay? So interfacial tension is defined as the amount of energy required to increase the interfacial area between two immiscible liquid. Okay, to, to measure surface tension, basically, um, okay, we put the, the emulsion in, uh, in a container. So in this case, we have a liquid, then we have air above it. Then we, this is actually a wire, or a very thin wire, made of, usually made of uh, platinum, because uh, platinum is used here because it can, uh, when, it, when it comes to contact with the liquid, it, will, it can be, it can get, uh, I mean the whole part of the wire, of the wire, of the platinum wire will be, uh, will become uh, wet and in full contact with the liquid. So we'll, we drop down the wire so that it can touch the liquid like this. Number from here, is we, we drop it down slowly. Then after that, we pull it, we pull up. Okay, we pull up slowly like this. And you can see at this point, that is when we can, uh, from this point to this point, number six to number eight, we have to pull it up very slowly. That is when we can um, get the data to, so when we attach, connect this to the computer, we can plot actually the force against time. And from this curve, we can do some calculation to calculate the um, surface tension of the liquid. So let's see uh, this video. Sigma force tensiometer is equipped with a super sensitive balance, a motorized sample stage, and a control. So this instrument is called tensiometer. Keyboard allows quick and convenient control during and between experiments. A platinum ring probe hung on the balance is used to measure the surface tension of the blue liquid positioned on the sample stage. Ring probe is immersed in the liquid. Oh, it's pulling down on the ring. The force exerted on the meniscus is recorded and can be used to calculate surface tension. Results are plotted and analyzed by the attention software. Platinum is used because it wets perfectly, which simplifies the measurement. Actually, any shape of probe can be used, as long as it has a regular geometry. For instance, a rod can be used for low volume. Next, we'll use a plate probe. That is the advanced uh, instrument, computerized. But uh, in the old days, uh, the one that we have in the lab, uh, which I bought for my research last time, this one, is still there. Uh, this is the old method, manual. Yeah. But the good thing is uh, we learn from the first principle. Nowadays, everything is computerized. Sometimes, you know, you don't want, you treat the thing as a black box. 
you just use and get the results and you don't know what happened, the fundamental aspect. Yeah? But um, let's see. Hey man, um, if you want to learn more, uh, you can just go to my the wiki. I have put a link down there. Yeah, it's optional. I'm not forcing you to use this uh, wiki. To understand emulsion and foam, we must first understand the basic concept of surface tension and interfacial tension. Okay. So one very important quality of the colloid or emulsion is the large interfacial area between the dispersed and the continuous phase. That is the reason why when we prepare an emulsion of foam, what we want to try to achieve is to disperse the liquid or the air into the continuous phase to get a very, very fine, small dispersed phase, small droplets, very small diameter. The smaller the droplets, the better, because it will increase the interfacial area between the liquid and uh, liquid interface or liquid air interface. To illustrate this, uh, let's look. At, let's compare two uh, situation here. Importance of large interfacial area. Let's say we have uh, we have, we prepare an emulsion. We have about the volume of the emulsion is twenty uh, cent centimeter cube of oil. Uh, we have twenty centimeter of oil in one cm radius droplet. So we measure the droplets about one cm. Then we can calculate the volume using uh, sim the normal way of calculating the volume. Each has a volume of 5.5 cm cube and a surface area of 12.5 cm square. So now we have this much oil. Each one has a volume of 5.5. Then we can calculate now. We have can have about 3.6 droplets and a total area of 45.5 cm square. Okay? Starting from 20 cm cubic oil, we disperse into the continuous phase. We get about 5.5 cm cubic and this. And we can have about 3.6 droplets, about 4 droplets. Let's say, yeah? And this is total area. Now, the same oil, but we make it into a smaller droplets. Each, instead of 1 cm, each is, would have 1.1 cm, 10 times smaller. Each has a volume of now, instead of 5.5, 0 0.004. Look at the surface area from 12.5 to 0.125. 100 times smaller. Right? Now we can have, instead of 3.6 droplets, we can have about 5,000 droplets. And the total area of 625 cm square. So meaning now we are able by by having a more smaller droplets we can increase the interfacial area between the liquid liquid or liquid air tremendously. From this much to that much. So there is one thing that we have to bear in mind when uh, in the preparation of the emulsion, yeah? the factor of the interfacial area. Why interfacial area is important? Let's look at uh, further. Let's look at it further. 
let's now talk about food emulsion uh, properly. Yeah? So far, we discussed about the dispersed system. So now we want to zoom in into two types of dispersed system, emulsion and foam. So we will start with emulsion, which is a dispersion of liquid, one liquid into another liquid. Oil into water, water into oil. With one liquid dispersed as small spherical droplets in the other. In foods, the diameter of this droplet usually falls somewhere in the range of 0.1 to 100 micron. Uh, two simple, uh, two types of simple emulsion. One is water in oil. So example is margarine, butter, spread. And oil in water. Example, mayonnaise, salad dressing, milk, beverages, cream, soups, sauces. And bear in mind, just like uh, earlier when I use ice cream as an example, when you have fat in the system, or when you have fat in the emulsion, whether it is a dispersed phase or it's a continuous phase, depending on the temperature, the fat itself can crystallize and form a solid crystal. So when it starts to crystallize, it will change the, the properties of the emulsion. Imagine in the process of making margarine. In the process of making margarine, we start with liquid oil. Yeah? Then we cool it down. The fat starts to crystallize. In the, in, in the ice cream, yeah? in the process of making chocolate. So the dispersed and or continuous phase of many food emulsion may be partly crystalline rather than being completely liquid. In margarine, yeah? in margarine there is always at any temperature there is always some part of the fat in the form of crystal, some in the liquid form. Yeah. Formation of emulsion requires the dispersion of one phase into small droplets. This results in a massive increase in interfacial area between the dispersed and continuous phase, as uh, we saw in the earlier slide. And in order to disperse the oil into water or vice versa, we can use a process of homogenization. Yeah? Or we can use a high speed, uh, high shear uh, mixing process by using high, high shear, high speed, shear, high speed uh, mixer. Or there are a few other ways. Yeah? by which homogenization is the process by which the dispersed phase is broken into small droplet. So in this case, actually, uh, we operate at high pressure, between 10 to 100 megapascal, yeah, are very common. So when we apply a very high, when we use very high pressure homogenizers, we can now able to disperse the, the, the oil into a very, very fine droplets. So we get a very, very stable emulsion. So basically, we have to apply a shear force. So when we use the high shear mixer or high speed, uh, high shear homogenizer, high pressure homogenizers, basically we are shearing, dispersing the liquid and shearing it into forming a very small droplets like this. So we use a high, a high pressure uh, or high pressure homogenizers. Um, in the lab, we can use the handheld type like this. Yeah. Um, there are a few ways, other ways of doing this. This is a high shear mixer.
This one using ultrasound. Yeah? So you can see it's very, very efficient using ultrasound. Uh, so we have a probe, ultra, ultrasound probe here. So we can form, we can disperse uh, very, very efficiently, disperse the, the oil. Try again. Oil and water emulsions are virtually impossible to form using an agitator. Even with an emulsification agent, present, this one using the, the normal agitator. Within seconds of the machine being switched off. This one using high speed shear, shear mixer, however, mixer, eh? produces an almost instantaneous stable emulsion. Can compare the stability. Yeah? So I have shared uh, a few more, I think a different type of uh, methods uh, you can use to prepare stable uh, emulsion. So it's there in the Edmodo. Um, feel free to go through it when you have time. Yeah? Any questions so far? Okay, I think we guess. I guess uh, we can stop here. Uh, tomorrow there's no uh, lecture for IMK two to one. Yeah, but I have given you something to occupy the time. There are two online presentation. Please use the time tomorrow to watch these two presentation, make a note, make a note, use the one hour slot tomorrow, please don't do other things, please watch these two online presentation, it's not on YouTube, it's uh, directly linked from uh, the prepared food website, make a note, uh, then um, I'll give further instruction what to do. Um, in the next, well, just check on Lenmodo what, what are the other things that you need to do after you have watched those two online presentations. Yeah? So I'll see you on Wednesday. Thank you.